Okay. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, What's New in Linkerd. I'm Libby Schultz. I'll be moderating today's webinar, and we would like to welcome our presenter today, Oliver Gould, Linkerd creator and CEO, CTO at Linkerd. Excuse me. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to talk as an attendee. There's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to add your questions there, not the chat, the Q&A, and we'll get as many in as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, just please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Also, please note that the recording and slides will be posted later on the CNCF webinar page at www.cncf.io slash webinars. And with that, I will hand it over to Oliver. Thanks, Libby. Um, so before I, I dive into this, if you can figure out how to give me a reaction, and I just want to see if you can give me a thumbs up in the in Zoom before I go on. Are you alive there? Are you able to interact? Yeah, we get some hands there. Thank you. Great. Okay, so before I, I dive in, uh, how many of you are actually running Kubernetes in production? Give me a, a hand if you are. Cool, we got a few there. Oh, excellent. Um, how many of you carry a pager for Kubernetes in production where, you, where you're actually responsible for things running? In, we got, okay, we got a few. Um, anyone running Linkerd in production? Okay, great, we still got a few, excellent. Uh, that's what I like to see. Well, my hope today is that uh, if you haven't used Linkerd before, that this talk gives you enough to get started and understand what problems it solves and how it works. And if you have used Linkerd before, I hope this will be an invite to get more involved in the community and contribute uh, in one of many ways. Um, so with that, my name is Oliver Gould. I'm the creator of Linkerd. I've been working on this for the past few years. And uh, the talk will basically start with a brief overview of, of Linkerd and service meshes and what they do. Uh, I'll take you through a tour of Linkerd's features, and then I'll, we'll get to the good stuff. We'll get to a demo and then have some questions after that. Great. So Linkerd has been around, uh, we've been working on it since 2015, I believe. Um, and it's been in production for over four years now. We've got a really active community. Many of you are already in the Slack or are already dealing with us in GitHub. And we really appreciate that. And we've been in production with a, a whole uh, you know, wealth of different types of companies, very small, very large, uh, big traffic, small traffic, everything. And we've been part of CNCF since early 2016, um, if I recall correctly, but we've been in CNCF for a long time. And that means we're committed to open governance. This isn't a, a corporate project. This is a community project, um, even though uh, Buoyant, where I work, does a lot of the work on the project. So Linkerd comes out of my experience or our experience uh, working at Twitter. Um, I was a production operations engineer at Twitter uh, from 2010 to 2015. And that's where we really saw what was one of the you know, first modern microservices evolve. Um, so this is of course with Mesos because Kubernetes wasn't around yet, but a lot of the same problems and primitives was there. And I was on call for service discovery and traffic management and a lot of the kind of core concepts that Linkerd uh, deals with. And then in 2016, we, we launched Linkerd um, 1.0, which was a, a JVM based proxy. And it wasn't Kubernetes specific. It's super, super generic. And we tie together Mesos and console and Kubernetes and all sorts of things. But it, over time we learned that the, that kind of heavyweight flexibility um, wasn't really a good suit for Kubernetes. And so we, we created a new version of Linkerd, Linkerd2, uh, which is really lightweight, meant to just get up and running and, and really tied to Kubernetes tightly. And that's really what I'm gonna talk about today is that, that new version of Linkerd, which has been around since, oh, I don't know, 2018 is when it became Linkerd2, but we've been working on this since probably 2017 sometime. Linkerd out of the box give you three kind of core uh, you know, poles of, of value. Uh, first being observability. It can be really hard to understand what's going on in your cluster. Um, kubectl is great, but it can tell you whether things are up or down. They can't tell you if things are slow or fast or if they're failing requests that's kind of very decoupled from the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, 
And we also have support for tracing and I'll, I'll get into more of that later. Uh, the other big thing we do is connectivity. And so load balancing, timeouts, routing, um, connecting clusters, uh, making sure that a pod can talk to another pod or another service is a big part of what Linkerd does. And we do that securely. We, we do that with MTLS by default for everything. Um, and we integrate with projects like Cert Manager, which is just admitted as a CNCF project. Uh, congrats, Cert Manager. And uh, I'll, I'll get into more of these details later. Let's start though with microservices. Um, I assume most of you are, are basically familiar with microservices, but uh, just to kind of lay the groundwork, microservices are, you know, contrast with what we had before then, the kind of the LAMP stack, in that we've taken what used to be a bunch of library interactions and this kind of linking and put that over the network. And so now we can separate business logic over the network and things call each other via APIs. The service mesh is a way to add rich operability, the things we were just talking about, as a sidecar to this. So you don't have to embed this in a library in your code. Of course you can, um, but it's about having a, a proxy that's able to do take on a lot of these concerns outside of your application. So you can have it uniformly depending on, you know, regardless of what uh, application stack you're using, whether they're homogenous or heterogeneous, uh, a service mesh can make that you know, uniform and, and work well. And this is all powered by a control plane. And so you have a Kubernetes control plane, which is the, the Kubernetes API server and, it, and its extensions. And Linkerd provides a set of control plane APIs that are interact closely with the Kubernetes APIs to power the proxies. And so in Linkerd itself, the proxy is basically unaware of anything having to do with Kubernetes. It only knows about the control plane API. The control plane itself is very tightly coupled to Kubernetes. This kind of looks like this, right? We, we have these proxies are objective sidecar. So it, within your pod, we add a container to your pod, uh, which is the proxy. Uh, that's done by a control plane webhook called the proxy injector. Also in the control plane, we have a certificate authority, which is the proxy uses to establish identities. Um, we'll get into more of those details later. And then we've, we've built the proxy in Rust. We've built most of the control plane in Go. Uh, we ship up an instance of Prometheus and Grafana by default. Uh, we have great Helm charts. We support SMI. We're, we're a big part of the, you know, we're big fans of the CNCF ecosystem. And so we really try to leverage as much of that ecosystem as we can that's not in our core competency. Our goal is to do this with out adding complexity. So Kubernetes itself is complex and that's really what we find. No, no one should want to uh, adopt a service mesh. Most people need to, are having enough trouble just to adopt Kubernetes and Linkerd is meant to just kind of get installed, get out of your way and then grow with you as you have more problems that you're trying to solve. Um, we really don't want you to try to solve all of the traffic problems on day one. Uh, that should be an incremental path if you're gonna be successful. And so to do that, we make it you know, it installs, you add it to your application, almost no configuration necessary to get started there. Uh, we really focus on minimizing the uh, resource requirements of Linkerd, and I'll show you some examples of that later. Part of our goals for simplicity are that we don't try to invent new abstractions that are specific to Linkerd. We really embrace Kubernetes primitives and sometimes to a fault, I would argue, but we really don't want you to have to introduce new types of abstractions that you have to think about and manage. We really try to use things that are already well understood and well supported. And we try to do that securely by default. Um, and we'll, we'll show more examples of this later. Uh, we do MTLS uh, by, well, we, we add security by supporting MTLS and the proxies. That's mutual identity where every proxy gets its own, uh, generates its own private keys. Those private keys never leave the pod. Uh, and then we automatically secure everything we can. And we don't currently break anything that we can't secure. Um, and this is really important because a lot of the Kubernetes core API or core traffic like uh, health checks, readiness probes, et cetera, can't be secured by default today. And so we really need to take an incremental approach to improving things and making it auditable. 
Uh, we've really focused on secure foundations. And so we, our, our proxy is written in Rust, which is a, a memory safe native language. I'll show more examples of that later. And again, built on Kubernetes, we want the goal for Linkerd is to be able to install it, add TLS, add policy and get going. The proxy is to, uh, one of the biggest questions we get is, does Linkerd use Envoy? And the answer is no. Um, and I'll, we, we really have tailored our proxy to the service mesh use case. It's not a generally configurable proxy. There's no config file that you can go change how the proxy works or add plugins to it today. And that's one for simplicity, two for, for minimizing resource overhead, and three for security. Um, we find that the more configurable something in this kind of critical uh, part of the stack is, the harder it is to audit, the harder it is to gain confidence about being secure. And so we really try to minimize the, the flexibility of the proxy and really tailor it for this use case uh, for these reasons. And we've had this um, audited a few times now. We basically do security audits once a year and things have been going really well um, as far as that. We've had a few very minor issues, but nothing, nothing scary. Um, and this is all built heavily on the Rust networking ecosystem. And if you haven't um, played with the Rust stack of Tokyo Hyper, Tonic, Tower, uh, these projects are, are really exciting and we've invested heavily in them. Um, in fact, a lot of the proxy code has been forked out of the proxy and moved upstream into these projects. Um, so we're, we're big fans of the open source ecosystem and, and making things better there. Okay, so that's just setting the stage. And I wanna go into a little bit more detail about the proxies or Linkerd's features in general. So the single sharpest tool in our tool belt is the load balancer. And so every proxy implements what's called a peak Yuma load balancer. Yuma is a exponentially weighted moving average. And we use the latency of individual requests to inform the load balancer. So there's no centralized load balancer state. There's no single load balancer you go to. Every, every pod has its own little load balancer embedded in, in that proxy that's making its own latency decisions and its own routing decisions. Um, this is all really tightly coupled to Kubernetes services. So we, we don't, again, we don't add new primitives there. We, we use services for service discovery, which means we benefit from things like service topology. And I, I think I saw Matei in the, the list here. Uh, Matei is one, one of our interns this summer and who implemented service topology support. And so service topologies are a new Kubernetes feature. I think they've just been available since 118 or 119. And uh, it allows you to express kind of node affinity and things like that, or you know, uh, failure zones and make Kubernetes services aware of that. And now Linkerd honors that stuff as well. This means that we can bypass kube proxy. And again, the big, big goal here is that you can just add this proxy to your application. You don't have to reconfigure your application to work all that differently. And it can take it can benefit from all this logic um, that's in Linkerd. Here's a really good example. I don't want to spend too much time on here, but just to show what a load balancing algorithm can actually do for reliability. Um, if we use something really naive, like a round robin load balancer, and we said, let's say we're, this is actually a test we ran where there's 10 instances and one instance is slow. It has a two second latency. Everything else is quite fast, you know, about hundred milliseconds. And what we see is that uh, if we set a one second timeout, um, a round robin load balancer means we'd have about a 95% success rate. And just by changing the load balancing out until least loaded, we can push that up over 99%. And with a Yuma load balancer, which is latency aware, we can get better than three nines. And that in at least my experience can be a real difference between being woken up and being able to sleep through the night um, if your pager goes off. And so I really do think that the, the load balancing in, in Linkerd is maybe under touted, but really important uh, thing that it does. One, I, the, the, probably the most important thing that Linkerd does though is add mutual TLS to all mesh connections. And so when we say that, we mean if there's a proxy on two pods and those pods communicate, we'll establish MTLS for that, uh, mutual TLS where both, both pods identify, identify themselves to each other and we have a, a secure connection there. This is all bootstrapped off of Kubernetes service accounts. Again, we don't wanna provide any new 
requirements in terms of API service area. So every pod generally has a service account. Uh, we take that token and use that to authenticate ourselves to the CA, which gives us uh, short-lived certificates that we rotate throughout the lifetime of the pod. Uh, the private key never leaves the memory of the pod. Uh, and this really is a important, um, important tool in a zero trust architecture. You can use things like Cert Manager to bootstrap this and help manage that CA. And also, if you already have TLS in, for your, in your infrastructure, uh, Linkerd will work with that transparently. We won't add a new layer of TLS to that necessarily, um, but we will let that pass through as TCP traffic. Uh, and up until 2.9, so Linkerd 2.8, for instance, only supported MTLS for HTTP communication. Uh, with 2.9, we've added support for both the load balancer and mutual TLS for almost all TCP traffic. There's some classes of TCP traffic that doesn't apply to yet, but we'll be fixing that in 2.10. Uh, that's really exciting, actually. That was a big thing we did in 2.9. Here's my, my favorite Linkerd feature. Um, and I don't think this is any in any other service mesh. You'll have to check with them. I, I haven't really done my research there, but this is something we specially designed in the Linkerd and that we do protocol upgrades between proxies. And so uh, this is a hand-drawn <laughs> diagram I did earlier today, but if you have HC1 communication and you're doing many requests at once, let's say you're doing a thousand concurrent requests from a pod to another set of pods, that'll be a thousand TCP connections. Uh, one per you know, request that's active. And with HP2 uh, multiplexing, what we do is proxies only establish one connection between each other at most that gets MTLS once, and then we multiplex all of those requests across that single connection. And then we you know, demultiplex it on the other end uh, so that we don't have to change your application semantics in any way. Um, Testing I was doing just in the last few weeks shows that this really, really, really reduces the memory requirements for these proxies. Uh, connections can cost quite a lot in terms of buffering and things like that. And so uh, by only having one connection, we really bring the proxy's memory usage down. And this again kind of speaks to why we've chosen to implement our own proxy here is we can be really special about um, the types of smart things we do within the scope of the proxy. And again, no application changes, just works out of the box. Most people don't even know about this. Another feature we implemented, I think probably about a year ago now, uh, is traffic splitting. And this is basically stoca stochastic weighted uh, routing. And um, a popular tool flagger can be used to drive this. It basically says if you have multiple services that you want to send traffic to, well, you can wait between them and say, I want 20% of the traffic here and 80% of the traffic there, and Linkerd will honor that. And I, I can show this off in a demo. Um, again, this was something that only worked with HTTP traffic until 2.9, and as of the 2.9 release, we now support this for TCP as well. You know, it's at the connection level, we can't be any smarter than that, but it is, um, it's really a convenient tool, especially for multi-cluster routing. So, um, this, the service mesh interface is a project that was initially sponsored by uh, folks at Azure, and we've been heavily involved in it, and most of the other service meshes have been heavily involved in it. And it provides basically three core APIs. Uh, one is this traffic split uh, that I just showed. Um, another is a telemetry API, to, uh, SMI metrics, which is really just a uniform set of metrics that will work with any service mesh. And then there's a policy API as well. And this is the, another CRD that will let you just uh, express policy. Linkerd doesn't support the policy API yet. Um, and we're working on revving that API with those folks uh, so that we can support it in a better way. So that's probably 211. So not in the next release, but the following. In 2.7, I think, and maybe 2.8, in the last release, uh, we started adding a multi-cluster capabilities. And this lets you, uh, basically sync services across clusters and route them through a gateway uh, or an ingress on that uh, other cluster. This is really cool and it works really well with traffic split. So the application doesn't have to know about where a service is hosted. You just say, I want to talk to the foo service. And if the foo service is actually an East cluster, you can make that all totally transparent to the app and even kind of do weighted shifting and things like that. Uh, this is great because there's no single point of failure here. We're not going through any kind of central 
decentralized load balancer. There's no special network requirements. You don't have to have a flat network where everything's addressable. Um, so we, we try to maximize for flexibility. And this is really the first Linkerd extension where most of the core Linkerd experience doesn't know anything about multi-cluster. This is a kind of a pure add-on which leverages the Kubernetes API and a little bit of Linkerd service discovery implementation to uh, make this really cool. Another reason that we focused on implementing our own proxy was uh, that we really wanted to have an excellent Prometheus experience. And I think it's gotten better over the last year or so, but for a long time, Envoy's Prometheus implementation was really is difficult. Um, Envoy started with a Statsky push-based model. And we've uh, taken another approach, which is to use a lot of the Kubernetes metadata. So the deployment you're talking to, the service account that that's part of the, um, the pod name, all sorts of labels for that pod, all of those things get hydrated on the uh, Linkerd's metrics. So we can give you really you know, rich dashboards and query, query ability. Um, this also we've extended to work with uh, open API or swagger specs as well as gRPC. So you can take those route definitions and import them into Linkerd and have all of that information show up in your Linkerd metrics as well. Um, again, there's no configuration necessary. Those swagger and protobuf uh, enhancements do take some configuration, but we just try to make this work all out of the box. You don't have to do any configuration. Uh, we ship Prometheus by default and you can get run up and running. Um, in two nine, you're also able to bring your own Prometheus. So if you already have a Prometheus in your cluster, you don't have to use Linkerd's as well. You can configure Linkerd to talk to um, the main Prometheus instance, and it'll all work great. We get a lot of folks asking for distributed tracing uh, with Open Census or Open Telemetry, um, and Linkerd can work in, the, in that world as well. But the dirty secret about distributed tracing is that you actually have to change your application to integrate with this. Uh, there's no way that we can do this totally transparent to the application. So if you have tracing set up in your ecosystem, Linkerd will emit spans and tell you, you know, where you're hitting hops in Linkerd um, in the service mesh. But this isn't something that'll just work out of the box. Um, but we, we have a good integration there as well. What will work out of the box is uh, Linkerd's tap functionality. And this is what I ca call ad hoc tracing, where you're able to, at runtime, without prior configuration, uh, query proxies directly and say, show me metadata about the traffic that's going through you. And so this isn't aggregated in the metrics form where you already know what you're looking for. This can be done kind of in the discovery or exploratory mode. Um, that does mean that your, your headers and all sorts of private information can be exposed by this API. And so this is all locked down with RBAC. You can set role bindings to make this um, much more locked down if you need to, or you can turn it off entirely. Um, and in fact, in 2.10, we'll be making tap an optional component, so you don't even need to run it uh, by default. OK, then there's a few more things in 2.9 that I haven't even talked about yet. Uh, one of the bigger uh, ones was a summer of code project that added multi-arch builds. So now you can use Linkerd on your Raspberry Pi clusters or your Gravitron clusters if you're in AWS. Um, so with ARM taking on a, a lot more importance in the world and being much more power efficient from what I can tell, uh, it's really exciting that Linkerd can work in those environments out of the box today. And so no configuration changes. You just, if you have a mixed cluster with some ARM nodes and some uh, AMD nodes, they'll just pull the right images and it works transparently. As I mentioned, Matei added service topology support. This also means that we now support the new Kubernetes endpoint slices API. The endpoint slices API is designed to allow your clusters to have much larger services. The Kubernetes API itself could get very slow around large services and large deployments. And so we support those new APIs that allow those things to be more efficient. As I mentioned just a second ago, uh, we allow you to bring your own Prometheus and Grafana. So if you already have those things, no reason to install a second copy of them. And in 2.10, we'll be making a lot of these components very optional where they get installed separately. Uh, and then where I spend most of my time is in the Linkerd proxy. We had a ton of changes between 2.8 and 2.9. Um, we basically rewrote the entire service discovery mechanism. So now instead of looking at host headers and, and headers of the requests, we, we do all discovery based on the IPs you're talking to. Um, so if it's an IP, we know it's a service IP and we can do load balancing based on that. Or if you're talking directly to a pod, uh, we'll just forward it to the pod without doing load balancing. And this means that we can work well with 
ingresses. So if you're using Envoy as an ingress, for instance, uh, we'll let you configure session stickiness or any of those things in Envoy and Linkerd will honor it without interfering. Uh, we've done all of this work basically to support MTLS for TCP communication. So most TCP protocols will now be secure and load balanced and routed with via traffic split out of the box. The protocols that doesn't match are server first protocols. So things like MySQL or SMTP, where the, where the server speaks first to the proxy um, or to the client. And that's because we do protocol detection. There's no configuration needed to tell us what protocol you're speaking for the most part. So we look at the first few bytes of the connection. We say, oh, this is HTTP one, this is HTTP two, and we forward it. And 2.10 will support uh, MTLS for those uh, protocols as well. And we'll also support it uh, and we'll also support multi-cluster for TCP connections. Um, there's a, we, as we've been getting more and more production users, we had some people doing failure testing and realizing that it could take Linkerd a while to reconnect after a node outage and things like that. And this was actually turns out because of Kube Proxy, because Kube Proxy itself, which is the, the IP tables based service discovery and load balancing scheme that uh, Kubernetes ships with by default, can actually be quite slow to update in some environments. And so now we bypass that entirely when we talk to the control plane, we load balance requests over all of the, the pods in the control plane, and it's much more resilient to those types of failures. We also adopted a new runtime in the proxy. So previously the proxy would only use at most one core. We only ran one thread for the proxy. And this is great for most applications where you just want Linkerd to be small and get out of the way, but some folks want to push 50,000 requests a second through a pod, and that's going to be really hard to do on one thread. And so now we support scaling this up. It on, there's a, an annotation, or if you set CPU limits um, via a, um, a mutating webhook or something like that, the proxy will just pick up those settings and, and limit itself to uh, the correct number of CPUs that you configure. And all of this work has enabled us to reduce latency, reduce the CPU usage, and reduce the memory usage of the proxies, uh, which is really one of the big motivators for us is to have the lightest footprint we can, uh, especially in the proxy. Okay, we finally got to the fun time. I have enough time to get through it, I think. So um, I, instead of giving you like a flashy microservice demo where like we've done emoji voto in the past, and I think in the two eight webinar I did we did multi cluster and things like that. I'm actually just going to show you the dev environment that I use for um, testing a lot of the proxy changes and Linkerd changes in general. Um, I'm a big fan of K3D. It's much like Kind um, in that you can just run it in Docker on your host, no build Kubernetes setup. I'm going to be using the latest Linkerd stable release, which came out on Monday. And I'm gonna be using this uh, load test tool I wrote called uh, ORT, might change its name, but uh, it's really just a, a, a client which generates lots of requests. Those can be gRPC, HTTP one or TCP, and we have a server that supports those. And this is what we use for testing or reproducing bugs or things like that. And so without further ado, let's see if I can show you what's going on. And if you can't, if, if this fonts to, Small, just shout it in, in the chat and I'll try to fix it. So instead of showing you how to set up a K3D cluster, I've already set that up and I've already deployed the app to it. Um, this is, you know, we, we have, I think about three, like nine, 12 pods running, something like that in the app. K3D itself takes about uh, 500 megs or so in this environment. And you know, I've been running these load tests, no Linkerd installed yet. Um, so this is just the, the load generator running on a host under my desk in my office, which I had not been to in a long time. Um, so let, let's install Linkerd and uh, I'll just take you through that experience really quickly. So before we actually install Linkerd, we're, we're gonna check and make sure the cluster is ready. Um, you know, if I had kind of, if I installed Linkerd previously and not uninstalled it properly, or if there's, uh, clock skew, we, we do a bunch of checks just to make sure Linkerd can be installed. Great, uh, that worked. And Linkerd, yeah. Um, so now I'm just going to install it. Linkerd install will just generate a lot of YAML. Um, 
and build those to quiet. And this will take a few seconds. Um, we see that Linkerd is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 components right now, um, all of them pretty small. You can run these in HA mode where they run multiple replicas of each. And as I mentioned, we now support turning off Prometheus and Grafana. Um, we'll make those kind of slimmer in the next release even so that the web component's optional. We'll give this a second to start up, uh, but that won't actually um, do very much for us. <laughs> We've installed Linkerd, but the, the application isn't running with Linkerd yet. And in fact, we see that here where um, there's only one container in each of those pods. Um, in order to validate that Linkerd is coming up correctly, we can use the Linkerd check command. And what Linkerd check does is it again runs through a whole bunch of common problems that can happen during an install and validates that they, they aren't there. One of the biggest things we have to make sure all the pods come up. So we're going to wait for all the pods to initialize. This will take hopefully not too long, a couple seconds. Much more impatient about this when I have people watching. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're almost there. So I don't know if you noticed, but before we uh, installed Linkerd, the, this host was about two gigs usage. And that was mostly uh, K3D and Docker. Um, we'll see now installing Linkerd, the largest part of Linkerd memory wise is the Prometheus instance, which is gonna run us around hundred megs or so in, in this type of environment. Um, and then if we, we can also look at the proxies, here we see the proxies all running. All of them, you know, most of them well under 20 megs. Uh, the, Promethe the one that's running with Prometheus, which talks to all of the pods in the cluster, is a little bit higher there, running around 20 megs. Okay, so I've got that all set up. Um, and now I'm gonna upgrade my test. So don't worry too much about this. This is a Helm chart I use for configuring different topologies to test. Um, let's see, we're gonna run at most three requests per, at once per load generator. Um, we're gonna inject Linkerd. And so this inject Linkerd uh, setting there, what it really does is just add a single annotation to the, the pods or to the manifests um, so that the Linkerd controller can know to inject these things. So by default, we won't add Linkerd to things. You can either annotate namespaces or the workloads themselves to get things running. And so that will, um, we're gonna roll our, our test environment there. So we see those pods restarting and coming up now with two containers. Let's see if this works. There's this check proxy command, which will, uh, Again, kind of look at the health and make sure the proxies have all started. They have service accounts in those pods, et cetera, so they can actually run. And now we actually have Linkerd running with this environment. So let me open a dashboard. Um, and this is really what we get out of the box with Linkerd. And so we immediately have a whole bunch of metrics about uh, What's going on in the cluster? So we can take a high level look at the namespaces. We see that the Linkerd namespace and the ORC namespace are the only ones injected. We're doing around 2.5 thousand requests a second in there, which makes some sense. And the other thing I've done is I've installed a traffic split here, which we'll see here. And so uh, now the load generator is talking to a single service called server. And that's being split equally across three separate services, service, server one, zero, one, and two. And they're all doing about the, you know, they all have the same weight and they're all doing about the same amount of traffic. Um, I've 
handcrafted some Prometheus queries here to show uh, the TCP load generator. We haven't wired through many of the TCP oriented metrics into the dashboard yet. Uh, that'd be a great place if folks want to help us there in the, in the 210 release. Um, but we see, you know, about the same amount of traffic being spread equally across all of those connections. And now what we can do is we can actually modify the traffic uh, just by editing this resource. So I'm going to open this traffic split resource. And I can put, say, uh, do 80% to server 02, and we'll do the remaining 10% each to the other ones. This will take a couple seconds, especially for Prometheus to do some scrapes. So, you know, Prometheus scrapes every 10 seconds. Um, the actual change will be instantaneous, but it'll take us a little, a minute to see this in the dashboard. Oh, one of the other interesting things that we see here is that um, we get a, a topology out of the box, right? And so we haven't had to configure anything. We're not using tracing, but just from the metrics being involved here, we can actually get a, a kind of call graph um, for your system out of the box. If we look at, for instance, one of the server deployments, we can see all the deployments that talk to it. Um, as I mentioned, we also have a TCP load generator that's talking to it, but it's not showing up because we need some enhanced metrics there, or uh, we need some UI work to show those metrics. And as we look at, for instance, the, the gRPC load generator, what we see are that we are actually doing, um, the dashboard's doing tap. And so it's actually looking and counting live requests here. And this shows us that like, you know, in the last 10, 20 seconds that we've been looking at this, we've been doing you know, a, a lot more requests <laughs> to the, the heavily weighted server and much fewer to the others. We also get that from our metrics here. And if we want to go even further, we can take all the load off of one of them. And in a few seconds, we'll see, I think server one just drop off the map there. Uh, as I mentioned, we ship a Grafana instance by default. And so we can actually just explore some of these things directly from here. Yeah, and we see just in the, this request hop level request rate graph that this has started at equal traffic, reduced to about 10% of the traffic, and now is at 0% of the traffic. Go to server two. We see the opposite. All right, that's enough fiddling around with Linkerd, I think. So looking forward, uh, there's a lot on the roadmap and the community is um, working on a bunch of different things, not all of it uh, at point. Um, the, one of the bigger features we're working on for 2.10 is really focusing on minimizing the core control plane. So in order to get TLS, service discovery and load balancing and proxy configuration, which are the, really what you need to run the service mesh, we wanna minimize the linkerd namespace to, to only those core concerns. And then things like Prometheus and Grafana and TAP are going to become an, an extension that you can add on to Linkerd with a single command again, um, but are not part of that kind of core control plane. Um, this, again, should hopefully make it easier to upgrade the viz components without having to upgrade the core components. And ultimately, we want that core set of functionality to change much less frequently um, to become boring is the goal. Uh, today we don't do, we have multi-cluster only supports HTTP traffic. And so the big thing we're going to do for, um, for that in, for multi-cluster in 210 is start supporting all TCP traffic, including server first protocols. And that means we'll start doing MTLS for those protocols as well. That will require some configuration to enable, but, uh, it's not, it's like an annotation. It's not that heavy. As, I, as we kind of saw in this demo, some of the TCP metrics, the, TCP, the pure TCP metrics haven't been wired through into the UIs. Um, I guess I missed one of the 
better we wanted to show where TC metrics are used, but um, we want to validate that. We want to validate that TLS is actually working. We have this edges command, which lists all of the, you know, in this case, deploys that are talking to each other. We can also do this by pod. You get a lot more there. And in the cases where this is from probably when we were doing the restart, we didn't have service discovery on some of those connections. So um, we didn't have identities for them, so they weren't provided. But we want to keep enhancing a lot of this functionality with, uh, with the new TCP data that we have there. There's a new feature, a newer feature in Kubernetes that's still not widely supported um, called bounded service accounts. And so today, every pod has a single server account that it uses for everything it's going to use, whether it's you know, modifying Kubernetes resources or doing identity provisioning. And there's a new beta feature that allows us to bound service account tokens to different uses. And so what we'd really like to do is have um, short-lived service account tokens that are only used for provisioning identity so they can't be confused with other things. You might, you know, if you give a service account token to something else, um, we can't be used that to get linked to the identity. Traffic policy, as I mentioned, is a big concern that we have. Um, we don't, we've been being pretty incremental about that. The goal is to first get everything to be TLS, get that to be multi-cluster. And then once we have these kind of core connectivity concerns, we can start to think about policy in a more serious way. Um, that's a big part of what I think differentiates LinkedIn from other service meshes, especially Istio, is we haven't started with all the features and tried to productionize them all slowly. We've really focused on being production ready and incremental in our approach there. Um, so that's what we're going to do for traffic policy as well. Uh, there's a group of folks outside of Buoyant that are very eager to implement PIPs 140 2 for uh, this basically means for government. So if you want to use LinkedIn in, in government applications, uh, today, our TLS, TLS implementations are not validated by the standard. And so there's some folks working on allowing it, you to swap out the TLS implementation for ones that are validated. Um, really excited about that as well. And right now, Linkerd only works within Kubernetes clusters. You can, of course, talk to resources that aren't in the Kubernetes clusters, but those aren't secured and managed in the same way. And so we're really eager to uh, allow you to add proxies to things that are not in Kubernetes so that we can support that use case as well. And finally, uh, there's a new um, WASM web, web assembly, which is neither web nor assembly, um, API called proxy WASM, which is supported by Envoy. And we started to experiment with what it would take to support that sort of thing in a proxy. Uh, I'm still a little you know, conservative about adopting leading edge technologies like that. Um, of course, I think from a security point of view, there, there may be some risk there. But ultimately, this means that you might be able to write plugins in any number of languages, uh, JavaScript, Go, Rust, and have them just dropped in the proxy and work without having to change proxy code, which is really promising. But don't let that stop you from getting involved in writing proxy code. It's important to call out that not all contributions to Linkerd have to be code contributions. We have a community anchor program where we just started over the past couple months where we really wanna get folks in the community who are getting value out of Linkerd and solving real problems with it. We want you to be talking about that. We want you to be uh, you know, on the stage at KubeCon telling your story and, and, um, and, and also telling, telling the good and the bad of what it's like to use Linkerd. And so if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, go to that URL and we'd be happy to help you set up with uh, both the material and the opportunity to, to go do those talks. And, in those blog posts. And finally, it's a, it's a community project, right? I've said this many times today. Um, and it's the real value of Linkerd is that we've got a great set of folks who are always adding new things to it, who are helping us find bugs before we get to stable releases. And so, you know, folks testing edge releases, uh, we do edge releases basically every week and stable releases about every two months or so. This last one is a little bit longer. Uh, but we'd love for you to get involved on GitHub. There's a help wanted tag where it's great to just, you know, chime in that you want to help us and, and start working. Um, we love code contributions. I also love it when people help people debug, each other, debug things on Slack. We have a lot of new people coming in and asking questions and it's great to have people who have already been there to answer those questions. So it's not just uh, a few of us all the time. We've got mailing lists, we've got, monthly community calls, we get security audits. We're, we're, we love the CNCF ecosystem and what it affords us. So 
with that, um, I would love to hear what questions you have, if any. Yep, let's go ahead and drop all the Q and A's into the Q and A box. And um, Oliver, you can take it away. And we have about 10 minutes left, so we'll get as many done as we have time for. Okay, why is my Q and A box not coming? <laughs> Do you want me to read them for you? Nope, I got it. Just catching okay. my, my breath. Um, so first question from Sanjay is, what's the alternate to strict and permissive MTLS mode in like V compared to STL? And so uh, I kind of answered this earlier, but we don't have a strict mode today. Um, there's a number of, of gotchas in, in, in the way of that. And so we're working on adding policy. I, I want to get the kind of first pieces of that into the 2.11 release. But today, uh, we're opportunistic about adding TLS. And so we're kind of in the permissive mode. Uh, and we provide auditing tools to let you debug and alert on that yourself. Um, next question is, uh, with the 2.9 release, has Linkerd been optimized for smaller footprint ARM devices like Raspberry Pi? It's a great question, uh, Pranay. Um, I wouldn't say it's been totally uh, optimized. We haven't spent a lot of time in the ARM environment yet. It's kind of experimental at this point, but our focus in general is really, really uh, lightweight. And so, you know, we were focusing on minimizing the control plane. So you have a very lightweight install footprint there. Uh, and also the proxies themselves, you know, are, are quite small. If we go back to this environment, which is running our load tests, uh, I, we started around two gigs and we're still under three gigs. And most of that is Prometheus, right? All of these, the largest proxies, Prometheus proxy at 28 megs. Everything else is 20 megs or lower, um, which is really, really lightweight, especially if you compare to some of the other service mesh implementations. So I, I think we'll be better on Raspberry Pi than some of the others are, but uh, there's probably more work to do there. Uh, we'd love help. And Sanjay also asked, what's the pl plan to implement authorization rules in Linkerd? Um, so uh, we're targeting something like the SMI traffic policy APIs. And so SMI has a, a traffic policy CRD. It doesn't quite fit our, our model of the world. And so we prob we're probably gonna submit another revision and work with them to, to rev that. Um, that design is probably kicking off in December in, in earnest. Uh, we need to get to KubeCon and get some of the, the 210 work in flight. But we'll start designing that uh, towards the end of the year. And uh, once 2.10 goes out, we're going to start working on that full time. And that'll be the kind of big feature in 2.11. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I would love input if you have pain points that you've seen in the existing implementations in either SMI or SDO. Uh, we'd love to hear what's worked well for you, what hasn't worked well. John said that I said, that uh, multiplexing feature reduces network load. I think um, this would reduce the amount of ports you use in a cluster, maybe preventing port exhaustion. It definitely can reduce the number of raw sockets and file descriptors that a proxy is open, right? And so if you imagine, because we're proxying TCP connections, we really double, if, you're, if we're not doing anything smart here, we really double the number of uh, connections in a pod, right? Because we have to terminate the connection when we accept it, and we have to establish new connections on the way out. And so this is the multiplexing really lets us work around that cost. It means one that we have, you know, we use far fewer ephemeral ports on the outbound side. And on the inbound side, we, you know, we're not really doing a port exhaustion on the inbound side, but it, it's a similar problem there where we try to reduce the number of sockets, the number of files that those proxy use. Um, and as we've seen in testing, that can really have an impact on memory consumption. So uh, yeah, we're, our goal is to minimize the, the operating system resources we need to to do these things. Any other questions? I've gotten through them too quickly, I think. <laughs> yeah, great. Anybody else have anything? There we go. Uh, does Linkerd support network policies similar to Calico or should one just use Calico? Uh, today, I would say use both. So I, I think, um, you know, security in depth is a, a better approach than just having one layer. And so it's good to use network policies where you really 
want to enforce where traffic can and can't go. But I think it's also important to use things like MTLS uh, for, for kind of the zero trust aspects of securing um, you know, communication and flight and things like that. Sam asks, can we segregate traffic between namespaces? For example, all namespaces can talk to Linkerd and Cert Manager, but not others, i.e. multi-tenant. Uh, this is a great feature request, and I think it's definitely something we're going to uh, approach. Like that's definitely a use case for us to consider as we implement traffic policies. Uh, this is, you know, an obvious type of policy you may want to express. Um, I think today the way to achieve that would be through a layered approach. So something like network policies layered with Linkerd. Um, it's on the roadmap. It's not really there as a, a full Linkerd feature today. Excellent. All right. You have time for one more question if someone wants to. Time for one more. <laughs> All right. Well, you can also jump into our Slack. I'm happy to answer questions there. I'll be around for some of the afternoon. I need to get outside. We have one more pop up. You oh, want to answer? One more question. Great. Are there plans to have beginner and intermediate coursework? Great question, Conrad. I believe that we just had a free CNCF course just go live. Um, so I don't have the link handy, but yes, there is coursework. It's available through CNCF. I believe it's free and it, it should be um, focused on beginner and intermediate for sure. Uh, good question from Jindong about, uh, is there a downside to HP2 multiplexing? And so it can uh, add latency and CPU usage in some cases. So it's really a trade-off between the kind of memory footprint and the, the socket overhead there versus uh, some CPU and a little bit of latency. We see higher tail latencies in the H2 one case, uh, but kind of higher, slightly higher average latencies or P50 latencies in the HP2 case. So there is a little bit of a trade-off there. That's a really good question, but uh, we think HP2 is a better default for kind of the lightweight approach. Okay. Thanks so much, Oliver, for a great discussion um, and a great presentation and Q&A. Uh, that's all the time we have for today, everyone, and thanks for joining us. The webinar recording and slides will be online later today, and we are looking forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.